Hello everyone, this is Habitch, and thanks for tuning back in to yet another episode of Dungeons of Dreadmore. We are going to uh, make them dread us, I have a feeling today, so uh, yay for that. Um, in our last episode, we were uh, we were rocking through level 2 and had just gone up to buy a new sword, and it's pretty beefy, so... Let's uh, just get rid of that blue borderline there and uh, get us ready to uh, to go. I think we're set up. So without a whole lot of preamble, let's just get our game loaded here. Uh, Havage the Adventure, here we go. Load us up. Uh, so in, uh, in yeah, the last episode, we just... Um, Kind of cleaned up our inventory after we we made a big sale, so our cash is low. Um, we wanted to get uh, get things squared away, and I think we have. We haven't yet um, done any combat, and I don't know uh, yet how much we do. Let's. Take a look here. We don't have a, a point yet, and we're pretty far from our next level. But um, having pushed through, we have one one remaining sword. But now we need to catch up a little bit on uh, on our Not dual wielding. Sorry, I'm reading it and, and talking at the same time. Faster kill kill. Uh, basic training allows you to effectively use up to two weapons or use two weapons at once. So that's that's what we've got. They're going and that means that we'll immediately just start to pull uh, benefit of this, you know, tons of damage we've now got. Um, but from there... Um, Attack now with all the weapons at the same time. Uh, your offensive abilities are increased for a short while. You automatically employ this whenever the skill chance. So we're going to get more, more of like a crit critical hit uh, bonus as we go. So let's uh, let's get back after it and see what uh, those go. We want to um, dive back into our real world, and we had run up to level one so now we got to find our stairs back down again this is a a bit of a chore but fortunately we don't have to come back to that version of Brax anymore he's done um, we got a couple of these other other copies of him out in the uh, world oh man I mean, I, I like the maziness. It's pretty fun, but uh, in all honesty, let's, let's just go. All right, level two. Um, here we go. I don't know that this was the same stairs. I mean, that was the one we actually came down into to start. So where are we? Over here. Uh, what remains is to get us up and over to here. I don't know where this portal leads, but let's see. Not better exactly let's just let's just suck it up and run um so yeah we're uh what why what what do i gotta do what am i, what am I missing guys Here? No. Here. No. There's a a lever there. What happened to my other lever? Right? Don't I need Uh Okay. This is uh Unexpected. I 
here, maybe? No. I am I'm baffled. I mean, clearly we got up there before, right? We bounced around, we went over to Krong and uh and forced our deal, or whatever it was. But uh I think we had to get <laughs> get to a a lever to bounce us between all these, right? There's that one. There's that one. Uh, do I have to just go like portal hunting now to try to find where these are? Is there something by that down steps maybe? Oh, this is bad news. Okay, well, prepare to bounce. Oh. Something here, at least. <laughs> that took us back to there. I'm sure I've already tried most of these, but it's over there. Now, were these the two I just. Your Fus Roda didn't. Uh... Give me a talk to the. Oh, what are the, the graybeards? Is that what they were? Is that a trap? It's weird. Weird little. Oh, those were the two. Uh, the fire and uh, and frost uh, buffs. Oh yeah, there's this one. Okay, here we go. Sorry about all that. Um, I don't know if that was me, if that was the only one we ever got. So this one, it, it was weird. That one potion wouldn't let us see. Conceptual reinforcement. For safety to remain comprehensible to the subjects, there must be some ex must to some extent be an identity, identity between safety and the concept of safety. Gird your loins with this absolute and ident defensive idealism. Okay. Um, keep that in mind. Again, 29 and 6 is what we're just doing on base level. You know, that kind of just takes care of any, ooh, an Eldritch crossbow. Now, we can't read about it either. So there's, like I said, not a far from, you know, a polished uh, a polished game, but then what are, you know, even the the AAA titles don't come up polished anymore. And anymore. I, I, was there ever the perfect game? I and mean, we all talk about those things but <clears throat> now you know what uh, what the temptation is here and what we may not do just at the moment um, here we got some penguins a lot of junk Again, you know, we're we're not oh man, that was a trap. Oh, that was something on him. Um we're not immune to damage. We're taking taking someone all the way. We're down twenty-five points worth, but um it's not something we just need to constantly stop to deal with now. We can just kind of keep playing and know that eventually we'll heal up like when we steal food out of this machine okay that's another cheese not gonna pay for any of that uh, we will pay for the cheese and that cheese and uh that's only five so we'll pay for it too um 
pull these down and out of the way so we don't accidentally sell along with our diggle eggs and don't care about the bronze root. So, all right, good. That's weird. <laughs> I didn't try to pick it, I just jiggled the handle. Um, okay. Yeah, come on out and fight me then. I guess this is the, you haven't been using your crossbow enough, reminder. There, take that. Uh, so as we said, uh, this is probably the chance to use the Mellotron. Monster Alchemel, the charlatan tapestries, must be defeated, and the artifact Bitwa, the destroyer of guacamole, must be used on the Mellotron. Of course, because uh, I had to go and say something, didn't I? All right, we got to go back down here, and we really need to make a decision now about what we're going to throw on the shrine. Um, nope, here. So clearly, um, we would do very well to enchant the katana, but the you know getting a plus couple of things on it doesn't really outweigh the risk of wrecking it at this point. Um, I think. Uh, we can kind of play around with a lot of things and see what our next next best option is. And maybe that, uh, let's do the Clockwork Power Lemon and see what it gets. Still please, oh, you, you're not pleased at all, Kron. Um, and a new power. So maybe, you know, there's extra text down here that talked about the blasting. So... That extra effect on our razor sword is uh, that it, it blasts away everything in front of you. That was a, a bonus effect, and uh, it's pretty great. So we get a, uh, a little bit more mana. Uh, that was a bit of a waste, but again, it, uh, it wasn't something that we wasted on our sword, and it... It wasn't technically a displeased response. There are times when uh, it, it will straight up, you know, Krong is displeased with you, and he'll he'll just intentionally give you straight up negative. So instead of you know a positive mana, which we just don't care about in view as a negative reaction. Um, He'll actually give you, you know, negatives to stats you may actually care about. You know, like down melee power or down, uh, down slashing or something. So, um, and you know, you gotta. It's just part of the deal. You gotta expect that. Um, and as far as I know, there's no, there's no acts that uh, that change those chances. If you know, feel free to comment. I'd love to know about them if there are, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what they are. Um, yeah, let's take another one. Okay, we need to look for an artifact. It's way down there. We're way up here, and none of these connect. And I don't even think this room is going to push through. So, of course, now we got to remember which of those portals we come out of. But first things first, let's uncover the map. Oop, found a trap I wasn't aware of. Again, why are we not just picking locks? Uh, I'll go ahead and use that. <laughs> not much use in the... Uh, the other critical attack because no we can't ever get close to three uh oh i don't know what else going on here but i'm not doing well it's still there though that's kind of cool all right let's uh, swap here maybe i don't think that has any now 
we can just pick it up. We get two more trap uh, trap affinities by wearing that ring. So keep some keep some specific uh, stat equipment. All right, mass pitting mechanism above, just right for our needs right now. Uh, we'll pick up some acid bottle bolts. What do we got? Uh, anything we need to be aware of here? I don't think so. Um, let's just do it. So when you open the mass pitting, it uh, somewhere has opened up a door. Not not quite to the level of like a monster zoo, um, but uh, whole whole group of monsters to uh to come down i don't know i don't know where these are maybe the game's just sick of me it's like move on you're done with level two um uh, but I, I suspect they're somewhere around here um or maybe they'll be tied into our two quests let's take a look at those you gotta find the magical artifact Krumkura, the birth of doom and we've got to defeat a shomble so Defeating a shumble is all the way down here, and defeating or picking up the artifact is here. But I think this is where we come out of this portal, so that should be pretty straightforward, I think. Yep, right, uh, right where we need to be. So this is what we're going to. Good luck being better than what I got. <laughs> Nice to have another razor sword after we uh, we completely blew it out of the water, but uh, I appreciate the sentiment, video game. All right, uh, so that one's done. We don't need the Lufus cube. I remember that. Now I don't think I can connect through these, so we gotta go up and around. Oh, don't look at the map. Look where look where you're going. Don't always look at the map. Uh, there's another little blobby. Hey, blobby. Ooh, cheese. Thanks, buddy. And how did I get the cheese and not the money? We're broke again. I just bought a 20,000 Zorkmid uh, sword. Oh, 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 oh. That was maybe a mistake. Oh, maybe you're really good, though. Okay. What's up, a shumble the charlatan tapestries? It's time for you to get boy oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um uh, yeah. Let's uh run away, run away. Um uh, discretion valor. Uh what are our best bolts? I think they're these bolt classics. Even though he was wrecking me, I was uh in just eating a sandwich and running away, he was getting just shredded. Uh that's crazy. And thanks to having eaten my uh just go. Uh, so now we've got Bitwa. Now we need to get all the way back over to here. Um, sorry, I'm maze running in my head here. All right, so up, over, hit a, hit a portal, and then don't run into the other one. Can we just go through the little hole? Hi. Hi to you two. Come on. And hi to you. Okay. Any Zorkmans? Anyway. Uh, of course we're gonna... Um, how is... Uh, I guess it makes sense that that... Kind of set there. All right. 
up and around. Ooh. Oh, this could be the, the uh, mass pitting mechanism. Um, so let's drop a bunch. Like I said, mini, think mini monster zoo, not, uh, nothing too crazy, but, um, not, uh, not too shabby. Uh, four more for the, no, I don't think they're going to last long enough for me to, <laughs> me to line up another shot. It'd be nice if we could, but uh, let's hope for a little more blast. Um, okay, so let's switch there. Let's wait and then get out of the cloud and the bat's going to take damage as he comes across to me. Not much. One more there. All right. We uh, keep picking away at the um, at the old XP. We need need a bunch. All right. A little rutabaga guy. Don't step on that. Getting close. One. Uh, what is the thingy? Bitwa. And we get a, a wizardy robe, it looks like. Kanuko, the drinker of waffles. Not bad. I mean, we don't want a robe, but uh, it's got some heart regen, which is cool. And again, obviously magic, you know, star and uh, some magic prowess uh, being forefront there. Not awful, um, but it certainly doesn't compete with our extra sneakiness, so we'll sell it uh, when the time comes. Okay, so put your fingers on the right keys. Makes you walk in a more predictable pattern, at least. Get rid of that. Um, let's go back over here. Now, unfortunately, we're nowhere close to um, enough cash to resupply our or, or get that other sort it would be great if we were um because we could then move on down and, and never think about coming back up and honestly we may not because that other sort you know we're going to find other options and other stores and all that and you know along the way we may just uh, get to a point where we don't that one isn't as appealing anymore um that's why I went ahead and, and bought the twenty thousand sword instead of the uh, instead of the the cheaper one um, right out of the gate. So uh, let's just make a sale pile here. I think all of this is good enough to be warrant selling, um, as opposed. But at the moment, at least, there's no. We don't have any more codes because we went back to get the chrome girl one and i just didn't cross it out so nothing further for us to do here we didn't find any of the uh the graffiti on level two but we got the monster zoo cleared that out um and you know came out of it with a really beefy sword we're dealing loads of damage um you know 10 if you're dealing 10 times the the level of your floor then you're doing pretty well and let's go down to level three um now again i said uh i said that we right, quick hang on i'm just checking the time i know we're we're very early here i'm going to uh let's put the will be right back uh feature up 
Uh, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here in her ear, but we're going to save and quit. Sorry, I just hid this, I know. Quitting the game. Uh, oh, I didn't play it. Sometimes, sometimes it plays the... Uh, from 2001 A Space Odyssey, it will play uh, the voice of Hal, I think, the computer. Um, that, uh, won't you please, please don't go, something like that. Uh, pretty, pretty funny, because you don't expect, you know, it doesn't do it so often, it's like once every, I don't know, ten times or something like that. But just unexpectedly pop. Uh, sip of water here. And load, damage, done. Okay, now while it's pulling that up, I'm gonna come back over, get the slide out of the way. Oh, I forgot to, forgot to activate it back up. So here we are back in, uh, in our world in level three. Let me be able to see. Um, I think we, yeah, we've already seen at least one. The zoos kind of help us see more uh, more of the combat. Now, since we've just relaunched, we've got to reselect a few things and make it so that if we pull things up, we don't uh, don't end up blocking our own view. Don't have to just be looking at those. We'll try to get the maximum viewable experience. we got a portal here, and we just want to... Oh! Hi, Diggle! Oh no! Yeah, we're doing all right here. He's got forty-two. We can do most of that damage. In, oh, except he blocks. Uh, AI's obviously, you know, anything robotic, it, as in most uh, games, they're going to be more resistant to some of the physical damage. Probably more vulnerable to um, electrical stuff like that. And there will be mobs that. The mage classes, and some of those have a much bigger advantage on, it. and that's that's cool. You know, that's what you gotta expect in any any game um, with different character classes. That uh, there's balance, and uh, I think we uh, failed on that one. It's generally not a good idea to hear the. Oh, come here. Hear the sound of blades when you're picking up a, uh, a blade trap. But we get a 150 XP um, statue. That's good. Um, and this probably is as a result of our uh, perception. Now, if I just try, yeah, so no, put on our ring. We can switch up there. I don't think that one has any trap affinity either. I'll just, um, you know, if we know we've got a couple, just don't forget to swap your your gear back in. Um, is a pretty good recommendation there. Um, so here, the chests, the chests on this level look a little bit more like the uh, the chests of evil on the previous level. Um, I think at one point I, I went around afraid to touch them before I actually read that they were uh, were not anything special, just you know, basically the crates of the previous levels. So uh, no, and this is this is kind of where I said you know sometimes you have to you have to prioritize away from just the straight um, combat perks, but combat perks are needed to kind of keep us alive um, <laughs> poor diggles just can't get a break and then when you get a little gap like this just uh, swap over um, put the poison back on the blade and uh, Keep mopping them up as they come. Uh, I don't think he would have survived to wait for the, the multi hit to recharge, but 
Yeah, a whole bunch of diggles. Our XP keeps creeping. A mossy shield. If we were shieldy, that would probably be pretty cool. But we we already did more shielding than we ever thought we would in this build. Okay, what's our lever going to do? Sound of machinery. Now, I don't, I don't know if that's the uh, unlocking of the, uh, the uber chest or if it's uh, something else. I don't know. But I do... Do appreciate that we can. Uh, I, I do like it when that works out too. Um, <laughs> hit them with the combo poison and uh, multi shot. And again, AI not dumb. It'll it'll try to spread the attack. You know, play play a little bit to its own advantages. Um, lots of swords now that we've upgraded, just like I said with the crossbow earlier on, you know. They, uh, like many games, once, you, once you've unlocked something by buying something better, all of a sudden it'll throw loads of options at you of the same category. But still no, um, no stinking cheese grater thing. I've been looking and looking. Um, oh man! Oh, that was dumb. Oh, now you're coming back. All right. Um, switch back those two. Yeah. Oh, did that happen? He did he did take us down quite a bit, or we already were. Like 17 down. And again, just remember, there's... Changing, changing levels, and you kind of got to be... Oh, man. I haven't even... Opened or repositioned. Potato... Beer, Pilsner, uh, Rusty Sword can go, I think. Anything can go, but uh, what What did I get rid of when I thought I was dumping the potato to start all this? Uh-oh. I hope it wasn't a bunch of diggle eggs. Was it a bunch of diggle eggs? Uh, by the way, what, you know, no buyback, no... No do-overs. I think I just sold a bunch of dig legs. That stinks. Um, and I just said, you know, be careful. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to just go throwing stuff away. Actually, I said that episodes ago now, but um, yeah, that's a shame. I uh, I think I dumped dumped dig legs. But we got uh, nearly a hundred in the Ludafisk, so that's something. Um, a lot of gold. Quick peek at the map just to see kind of what we're filling in here, but I am trying at least to. Uh, oh, almost missed that. Um, mystical graffiti, that's good. Zen USW Echo L Chu. All right, so that's good. We we could use use a little other dimensional power at some point. <laughs> All right. Um, Again, not having the shield. The shield had extra visibility to traps and mines and stuff. So, um, 
Oh, we're a little more vulnerable when we, we run with the sword, but I'm willing to trade that, obviously. It's uh, a huge advantage to be able to deal this much damage, but uh, all right, we've kind of lingered in. And you can tell when they, sometimes when they show you in, you know, here, it, all of a sudden it went from just an outline to a full thing that shows you that you've kind of leveled relative to the, uh, the trap. Cheese. And this game, like many, you know, play through to play through, you're definitely going to get a variety of uh, behaviors. And it, I think in most games, you'll, you'll notice that a game will, will add some complexity by um, limiting, you know, a particular type of item for that playthrough. Sometimes you'll struggle to find your primary weapons. Sometimes you'll struggle to find uh, ranged ammo. Uh, sometimes, as in this case, we haven't gotten the thing to help us get food. And, um, and you know, that, that's good. I, I think it, it it can be frustrating, but it's also good, you know, what's it? To have to hunt for those kind of things and wonder, hey, you know, if we had as OP a weapon as we do right now and didn't have to worry at all about food, well, you know, we'd, we'd have five levels done here in the rest of this episode. As is, um... <laughs> oh, man. All right, enough. As is, we, uh... We're cruising pretty effectively, but we just uh, need to need to be aware we don't have a lot of deep, big food. So you know we'll have a new zoo at some point on this floor, and um, if you if you duck out to fill your pockets in uh, in the the key portal, or you know whatever it is, pocket dimension deal. That's it. You don't you don't get another chance to get whatever that bonus piece of equipment or gear is. So in the game, the you know, game seemingly, while it's been withholding the uh, <laughs> I was gonna say we may get the we get the XP boost right there. Um, well, the game's been ex withholding the cheese grater thing, whatever, I, I don't even know what the name of it is, but it's the last of the kind of craft, craft benches, crafting tools, I don't know. Um, it also hasn't given us anything to grill, grill meat on, and that, you know, that would be an answer, so... I, okay, here's the Octo. We had never read that, and we, I was frustrated on it a little bit. So, Octo, it's an animal. It is dead. Spell casting cephalopod, cephalopods with a taste for human brains. Make calamari out of them. Uh, and it, I guess, uses crippling wound. I'm not sure exactly what that's telling me. Um, or if I gave it one. <laughs> that, was, that was what got it. Maybe that affects the calamari. Oh, here's a mini fridge. That's the first of those we've seen. Ooh, good. Hi. Why not? All right, we'll meet you halfway. Oh, you didn't like the poison? Or acid or whatever, whatever we're currently using. So, mini fridge. Uh, we found nothing in it. There's a door back over this way. Let's go check it. You know, when they're close like that, I like them. It's kind of cool, but it was that one we had to like walk walk around a massive loop to get back over. And usually it is, you know, pretty mid tier stuff, but uh, may have some value. 
for all I know, that could be a potion worth hundreds. So, uh, right back to here. Oh, and a new guy here. Undead Aethernaut. Uh, he's an undead. Just some dead guy in a suit. It is peaceful and not attacking you at the moment. Well, that's interesting. All right, we'll give him a chance. I'm going to go uh, talk to Inconsequentia here. Uh, Monster Arjit Mahad of the Destiny of Envies must be defeated, and the artifact Powak, the mystical duke, must be recovered. Uh, cool. Now, if he doesn't bother me, I'm not going to bother him. I think... Yeah, I think that may change. Okay. Um, this is charged. Let's use it. Uh, I don't have a chance yet to put on the poison, but we don't seem to exactly need it. Haven't, uh, okay. Let's go ahead and ask. I keep, oh, it's venomous. Fuse your weapon with a vile poison. Yeah, all right. I keep... I see the green, I think, acid, um, but it's not. <laughs> Is he still... Is something else here? It's peaceful and not attacking. That's awesome. I can't believe he's just standing there as I, uh, as I go through battling all his buddies here. But I won't uh, I won't mess with him if he's not going to mess with me. That's for sure. I don't need that. Boomerang? They don't come back to you, I remember. Um... All right, we'll maybe mark these uh, traps if we can. Again, another one I can't uh, can't read about the item. I don't understand how these are all so peaceful. What's uh, what's the trigger? It kind of changes the game. He's a uh, he's angry. This is wild. <laughs> is this whole game supposed to be like this? All right, so with the food, um, again, not much here. We don't want to buy the, the bottom tier food, and we don't necessarily need to buy the, the upper tier, especially when... Oh, this monster is trying to kill you. So he just woke up to uh, to me as a threat. Those two are still peaceful, though. So, all right, let's switch out our gear here. Oh, and we're full. Um, anything trash tier? Grog, H steak. Uh, Pilsner. Base weapons, I think they're all good. That's that should at least give us these traps recovered, and then we'll go uh, pop over, reload our gear or unload our gear. All right, so in we go. Steak can go in the meat pile. Cheese round, gouda, mini gouda. I saw, I saw the other day. So I, I, I'm pretty sure most people in the United States, at least, and I would imagine these uh, these are common kind of you know around the world. I think America was kind of late to the game as far as uh, as you know little um, snackable type cheeses. But anyway, um, here at, what are they rondelay? Is that what it's called? Uh, they're a little red. Uh, a baby bell or something like that. Um, cheeses, you know, it's a, a whitish cheese. It's not like a full Gouda, and it's nothing fancy. It, it's basically for kids, but, you know, it's the red waxed uh, mini ovals of cheese. And, you know, parents who, uh, who still send their kids to school with bag lunches, like, I, that, was, that was how we rolled. Um... A lot of them will drop those 
those uh, cheeses in. Now, I don't even know that they were around. I think string cheese was kind of a new deal when we were little kids. I mean, you know, maybe it had been around, but the whole like individual packaging and uh, having cheese that you know could sit in a lunch bag throughout the, throughout the day without at least becoming toxic to your kids or something. Um, those were uh, kind of new deals. All right, so we've got one of these, and we've got one of those. So those two can both get dropped. Again, uh, we're really just waiting on one type. Did I then? Did I put the boomerangs away correctly, or did I goof that up? I don't know. That's not as big a deal as the dig lights we lost. I'm bummed about that. Uh, and you are a. That's the the cheese we were waiting on. The, the nine health cheese. Okay. So anyway, the uh, the little baby baby bell mini cheeses coated in wax and sealed. So they're you know they're pretty good, but they were just a uh, just saw a commercial the other night, and it was like now with no preservatives, baby bell cheese. You know, yay! Welcome to organic and you know all that kind of stuff. Cool. I'm down with you know offering those products, but. I don't know if the cheese that parents have for years been throwing in lunches or making for snacks, or, you know, having the kid throw a couple in a backpack or take on a hike, that those are the best things to really just completely eliminate preservatives on. Maybe, you know, the the cheese that a lot of people rely on to be non-refrigerated is one to keep preservatized. Um, that's my take anyway. I don't know. Uh, might be silly. All right, we'll get some more Diggle Eggs back. We're still really waiting on finding any kind of like a kitchen slash food area. Oh, I'm sorry, Octo. I didn't even get to swing. Oh, but oh, that's a gem. I thought we found a, an item. I think we still have a quest, right? We got one done, one to go. Yeah. Uh, and we don't even see, we don't have enough of the map revealed to see where, where on it they are. Uh, it looks like we really only have one, one possible opening still to us. We might have to just start, uh, portaling into places and that's not, uh, not always an ideal option. Okay. Uh, I'm still uh, totally against my instinct. I'm leaving those guys to chill. All right, this does let us go through a door. Uh, even if it's revealed by a door, I would rather have my monster zoo experiences be um, pull the lever to engage dark forces. Ha <laughs> uh, I think that one just gets more more mobs down below us. Uh, well, do what we can. Oh, Potion of Midas. That's the one that we find in the uh, deal, right? This potion is spoken of only in hushed tones by the dwarves, glittersmiths, and never mentioned by name. The flask is filled with a shimmering gold fluid. I believe this is the one that gives us more cash for each, uh, each mob we kill, right? And if we're about to pull a lever labeled Engage Dark Forces, Seems like a reasonable deal to me, right? Let's try to protect our diggle eggs. Let's drink one of these. Yeah. For a while, all you touch will turn to gold. Well, bits of your enemies, at least. So we get 12 kills with increased uh, uh, Zerk Mints. So that's cool. When I notice potions and I know what they do, I'm not opposed. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a teetotaler. Is it gold ingot? Yeah, we'll take that too. All right, uh, let's open the door, clear the room, and then engage dark forces if we can. Ooh, we got a, a crabby looking thingy down there. We still got our our trap ring on, which is nice. Apple, crafty crafts. Uh, at least we get a gem. Again, we're not gonna look to buy much in those. Oh, finally. All right, before we pull the lever, this monster is trying to kill me. Uh, 
we'll we'll take the turn to swap out our rings. Oh, I, I, that, it's weird. That doesn't even slow us down. Um, all right, we'll take the ting to turn to charge us up. Give me your gold, buddy. Sixteen of them. Give me your gold, thingy. Sixteen of them. I see. I see a trend here. Ooh, and a level up. Yeah. Blue Thunder of Furinkin High. I assume that's a uh, some kind of a cartoony thing. That I don't know about. All right. Uh, as we talked about, there's there's kind of two choices now that are gonna vie. Um, one is using perception to see more traps. Um, the other, you know, again, at some point we want to fully juice up our swords, but we we got a little catching up to do on our uh, our dual wielding. So I'm gonna I'm gonna push there and. Uh, Go and spend those points, and maybe that's a mistake. You know, maybe maybe I should use these as a higher value. Uh, you know, there's lots of just constant effects there. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I wanted to catch up dual wielding now that we have two swords, and in case we uh, in case we get others, uh, and we have a rough iron sword. I don't think we've. Uh, let's see what transparent and uh, one with the water uh, invisibility. He can't even see us. Drink, poison, whatever. Crate. All right. Search the barbecue. Grill is empty. I don't care. <laughs> We're going to our pocket dimension real quick. So uh, let's. You know, we're here. We might as well uh, clean up a little bit. Gold, sword. We're going to hang on to that. Gem. Trash, trash, trash. Lutefisk. And trash. And then we might as well save our Diggle eggs. Um, and we're going to pick up all the meat that we have and then we're going to come back out here and we're going to cook those up we now have seven grilled steaks and then we're going to put four steaks on and we're going to grill those and now we've got 11 grilled steaks so our ability to heal 10 10 hearts uh just increased quite a bit you know we were uh went down to like two of those after the last monster zoo so that's a big help knowing that we've got another one out there somewhere between behind any random door we could just get out a whole mess of trouble so that's good we'll pull this down here just so we remember um never hurts to have more gold and well we haven't even finished it yet so um uh, let's keep killing Currently don't have our trap ring on, which is just good to keep in mind. Um, Two more Midas kills here. All right. <laughs> I think that was two different uh, readouts. But it looked like we got like 1,300 gold. I don't think that was exactly the case. But the Midas is a nice um, little potion and all. But I don't think it's that nice. And speaking of which, let's uh, let's go ahead and drink the next one. Might as well, right? No no reason to sit on that. I don't think that there's any, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think there's any like right or wrong time to use it. You, it's not going to expire, so you don't have to worry that you're going to run out of mobs. Um, the Mesa Windu. Nice. 
He's too evil to take to stand trial. Or he is the courts, or whatever he says before he tries to kill Palpatine. Uh, poor guy. Alright. We'll poison it up. Choppy chop chop. And there we go. Well, I used up half our native platinum. I doubt that's as good as refined platinum. Boy, I tell you what, if we could get our elven, uh, elven cheese grater. Oh, hey, what's up, Brax? A crude knife. A, a mirror darkly shield. Nice. Not our cup of tea, but that's, uh, we're seeing more and more cool stuff. A magician's real. We got one of those to sell. A spiked leather collar. We don't have anything on our neck yet. We haven't found any necklaces. So that might be worth picking up for only uh, 496. We already got one of those, and we don't want metal armor. Um, but you know what time this is. If we're set to go, let's. Uh, Let's very carefully not to sell our Diggle eggs. And through some of the rest of this, I'll kind of talk through these, and then uh, when we reload over in the uh, using the wizard keys, we'll again even hard you know like hard side or some of the better. Uh, better. Um, brews just have no real value. And maybe that's like the food too. I don't know. But um, I definitely think the the hearts, because they're valuable to every player, are, uh, are a little more appealing. So, back over here. Dump quick our good stuff. The Diggle eggs and the cheese round. Uh, hopefully chocked with the preservatives. Okay, now just load up. We're not going to sell our ring, but everything else goes. Everything else must go. All right, there's a load. I'm going to uh, lift my mic here, do some click selling, and uh, I'll try to move slowly, as I said before, uh, just so you guys can kind of see the prices. I'm going to sip on some water while I do. My stomach was making like whale noises while I did that. <laughs> oh, those didn't come through. That's kind of embarrassing. I promise, no, uh, nothing came out. It just uh, a little, a little chewing on the the old dinner salad. I think. And I. I would love, again, this it's asking too much of this game, for sure, but, uh, you know, shift-click to select items in your inventory and then sell them all. Any game, it, it just seems so intuitive um, when they've got you clicking through endlessly just to manage stuff that everybody's going to do. You don't want to, you never want to sell all, right? It's, it's dumb. <laughs> That you want to you want to sell, but sell all of type, or you know, sell sell all crafting ingredients. I've often I've often felt that way in uh, Skyrim with some of the you know I don't know what what's the one that uh, I can't look away and try to you know think in my mind. Well, churn here. Um, Oh, you know what it is? Fallout 4. When you're in the um, when you're in the inventories, uh, like in a workshop, 
if any of you guys, uh, hopefully, you know, most most people know that game. It is it is uh, an M uh, game. There's lots of violence and uh, and language and stuff. So uh, you you know you, your parents or, or whoever, if you're a younger audience watching this game, may rightly um, tell you to uh, to wait a while to play that game. And uh, you know that's fun. It, you know. All depends on, on how you were raised, what what your parents are comfortable with you being exposed to, and what they feel is appropriate. You know your your um, ability to uh, to play through some of those things may not may not actually be the same as some of your friends, and that doesn't mean it doesn't make you any more grown up or less or anything. It may just be about your background or, or something that uh, that uh, those things don't work very well. I mean, I I still for. For a long time, um, I I didn't do real well with horror movies, scary movies and stuff, you know. I would just <laughs> kind of, you know, I knew enough about how it was all set up that I would I would hear the, uh, you know, the music change and all that. And I'm like, okay, it's coming. And I'd kind of be waiting for the jump scare. It would still get me, you know, every time. And not that, not that those things did it, but if it was the right, kind of scary like a thinking scary type movie not, not you know slasher horror or whatever i've always laughed and, and kind of jiggled around. I, I grew up in the age of friday the 13th and nightmare on elm street and all that so i i actually really enjoy some of those movies just for the the kind of novelty laugh of it but um you know some of the real suspenseful type stuff it still got me i remember uh, as an adult this was in or after college. I was watching. It was just some, you know, kind of documentary, early days of the History Channel or whatever. I was over at a friend's house, not really even, you know, planning to watch any TV or anything. And they had this this, you know, documentary type thing on um, as we were just doing something else. I kind of got sucked in, but it was uh, it was the. Um, a thing on the atmospheric post World War II uh, nuclear weapons testing, and maybe Fallout Four made me think of this, but um, you know, just showing how when they were learning, you know, like the first time they dropped an or tested an H bomb as opposed to an atomic bomb, and how much bigger the yield was, and how unprepared they were for it, and they had you know military observers out there and. You just watch kind of from the the aerial shot as the mushroom cloud is growing and the shock wave that just rips right over the top of all these people that are you know thought they were at a safe distance and observing you know I think a lot of those people ended up with with all kinds of you know cancer and you know not not immediately and this is in the same era when you know everybody's smoking to be healthy so it's not you know it's not a, a vacuum but yeah that you know they were unknowingly. And, you know, I, I don't think it's big, evil government ever. You know, I, I think that's easier to make stories and feel the imagination than it is to really find people that are, are truly like, yeah, I, I don't want to go help or hurt our enlisted people. Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> we got through all that. But yeah, that that really, you know, it took me a minute to, to kind of get over that. There was actually another lecture in college. Um and we were talking about World War One, and uh, while while World War Two, you know, worldwide had far far more fatalities as a result, you know, in, in the millions, but World War One in the you know particularly for the European countries. It affected so much more greatly than any war ever had before. Um, and, and, you know, they said, you know, there, there's still the missing generation where for an entire age worth of people, in an age worth, I mean, the, you know, a, a group of children that should have grown up in, you know, a, a four, five, six year range. Uh, there, there's just a population ripple that still continues to this day where there are fewer, you know, fewer schools and teacher resources are needed and all that kind of stuff because those people's grandparents who would have been 
you know, the, the young men of Germany and France and England uh, and pr primarily, and that, that's what I'm most familiar with, but I'm sure Turkey and, and some of the other uh, powers that were fighting, but really it was the, the trench warfare of, you know, having machine guns and tanks and all this new technology and still trying to apply the tactics of past generations of war um, it, you know, which basically was sound of bugles or whistle, you know, sh sound a whistle or something, and everybody goes up over the trench and tries to rush the other side. It's what the American Civil War did, you know, with charges. And there, yeah, you you stood a real good chance of getting uh, getting caught by musket fire as you did it, but um, it uh, it it was just you had a window there where people had to reload, right? They got one shot. If they didn't get you, then you had a good chance of, of catching up to them and being able to, uh, you know, swing a bayonet or uh, or something else or, you know, have fire your one shot as you, you got past their, their defenses. Well, they were still trying to use that kind of uh, an approach in in World War One, but there were just machine guns on the other side, you know, so there was no, no break and they they very quickly you know that was why it bogged down into trench warfare there was uh so this is a real beefy trap by the way we're already using our trap ring and we still had to rely on a chance to pick that one up so um but yeah uh crazy stuff and, and there was a particular lecture that talked about how um uh, medical medical procedures actually took such a drastic leap after that war and and that there are these ripples in technology and response where um medicine isn't equipped to deal with the new technology using being used to kill people you know maim them or whatever in war and that then you know medicine quick catches up takes a, a kind of jump into the uh into the uh future to um, show, you know, how, because in those kinds of wars, doctors in triage and, uh, emergency surgery and all that, that, you know, honestly, for better or worse, they have a lot more flexibility and freedom to, you know, the mistakes that they would lose their license for and get sued for if they made them in a hospital, you know, on, on your kid, um, when it's a soldier that's, you know, one of hundreds that are about to die and you know they they can just go quick and dirty and the the surgeons in, in particular but people that come out of battlefield medicine emerge into their later professions so much more skilled um, than everybody else so the you know the point of the lesson was that um, a lot of uh innovations came as a result of that just the idea of triage of when you are flooded with patients is it uh, you know how do you decide who to who to treat first and what the priorities are none of that existed prior to world war one and that was where you know they really okay these are these are the first wounds that get treated or these are the the patients that are most critical classifications of critical or you know um <laughs> dire it's these guys are just come back over here what are you guys doing um those all came you know as a result and it was tragically the result of uh trying to manage these um these horrific wounds, you know, and the volume of people that were injured. And in addition to, let's go ahead and eat one of these grilled steaks, kind of speed up our recovery here as we talk and go. Um, as a side effect of improving medical care, they, they were keeping more people alive that had never, would have never previously succeeded survived right the the whole idea of uh infection and dealing with that had changed since uh the civil war here in the united states and um some of the 19th century excuse me uh later 
later conflicts in Europe. Wow, those hiccups are brutal. Um, but yeah, they uh, they were very quickly becoming better at at using the new medical techniques to allow people to survive what would have once been fatal injuries on the battlefield. But then those people had a whole new horror awaiting them that they were uh, tragically and horribly disfigured when they returned from war. You know, and remember that there was a lot of gassing. Uh, there was a lot of firebombing. So people that were, for the first time, surviving horrific burns. And so as a result, some of the ideas of skin grafts and some of those kind of things came along um, but again I you know I, I was in college and you know young man kind of you know uh, enjoying uh, my my life and everything else that was going on and the history was a real passion of mine I walked out of that particular lecture almost in tears uh, you know and quietly you know I'm like you know, I think, but it it shook me up to this day. I mean, this is uh, twenty some years ago. I'm still just talking about it and remembering how much that and the you know the thought that these were men who you know went off to war probably a conscription um, early in their lives. Not certainly, you know, even if they were volunteers and enthusiastic and going to go go win the war for uh, any country, you know, whether they were on the the, the um, Austro-Hungarian side or whether they were on the, uh, the, I think they were, they referred to themselves as allies in both, in, in both. The Axis powers was a, a World War II exclusive <coughs> term. So, um, anyway, uh, getting into way, way too many intricacies, but the you know, the, the piece for me was walking out of a lecture and, you know, just understanding for the first time that, you know, you, you kind of, in our age growing up, you think, all right, um, you know, injuries, burn, if you get burned or something, you get a skin graft and you grow up and you know, like, oh, that, you know, when you see people that are scarred like that, hey, um, you know, you, you, you learn as a kid, most, you know, most kids have some kind of an experience with some kind of a handicap early on. You know, your parents kind of use that as an opportunity. You don't stare. Uh, you can, you can ask questions, but you have to do it in an appropriate manner. You don't just, you know, uh, be rude about it, those kind of things. And that there, there's still people, you know, most, most people that have gone through um, a, let's see what we got there. I think they were more generally not great shoes. Yeah, I, I don't know why we, <laughs> this is the, the run of the mystical shoes. What was that movie? Something about the shoes. Um, oh, what do we got? Maybe this will uh, make up. For the, ooh, now what do we have here? Some kind of a protection and trap visibility, maybe? Yeah, we may switch this out real quick. Uh, I think one of those is trap sense, right? So what's this existential, existential resistance? You think, therefore you resist. Uh, I don't know what existential damage is, but uh, I'm glad to have resistance against it. That's good. And then we have a uh, trap sight radius. Perfect. We needed a bit more of that. Ooh. Oh, get out of the purple. Get out of the purple. Oh, boy. Um, let's run. Let's not not hang out there until we're fully healed up. Woo! Um, now, it's not a monster zoo, right? So we can, we can kind of move around, but we're not going to jump dimensions or anything. I just want to... Uh, take my time not really eat we don't have a lot of high tier food and i'd really like to keep some of it uh preserved for 
for when we encounter a zoo. Uh, but we uh, <laughs> we got close there. <laughs> that purple damage stuff, that's worse than the uh, the brown sandy kind of uh, I don't know, ghost, zombie, whatever, uh, mummy damages. So, all right. I think we've equipped ourselves. Now, do we something? Yeah, let's get rid of the trap ring. There's there's some danger down there. And I don't know if that was one of the mobs stepping on the trap or what, but uh, not cool. We're out. Okay. Well, it would appear that maybe that... Oh, no, he's still here. The Great Pumpkin. Not so great anymore, are you, pal? All right. <laughs> I like that the great pumpkin is invisible. Thanks, Charlie Brown. Uh, so anyway, just to to wrap up, um, definitely worthy of review and, and investigation. But remember that you know any medical advances and things that we have in the world, that like you know vaccinations. How much have we learned about pandemics and stuff that in the future people will take for granted? And we had to we had to kind of endure to get through. Um, this current pandemic with an understanding of how how this worked mass petting pitting mechanism above so that's another mini swarm of enemies we're certainly not going to pull that lever while we're um, under <laughs> under equipped man oh man oh man give me the stupid cheese grater thing and this wouldn't be a deal oh we do have one grated cheese which is nice. Um, this can go away. These can go away. Uh, even that. Like we saw, what is that, like 12? Uh, vitriol? Again, I <laughs> foul and largely unappealing. Okay, well, uh, these are cheap. Just making a bit more room here. Bolt of mass destruction is uh, pretty good, but that's why you only you know see one or two of them. They're really expensive when you do uh, do find them for sale. And later in the game, yeah, you know, stock up, be ready to use them. But uh, for the moment, um, we'll just we'll save and sit on that. We, depending, you know, it might even be worth it to sell it early in exchange for later on. But uh, I think let's keep holding for now. Uh, maybe we can aggro and get somebody else to use our traps for us. Um, it's an acid bolt trap. That's not going to be a massively beneficial or, or deadly for us. All right. Oh, we got it. Good enough. Not gonna. Sorry for the slower play here, but uh, we reached. You know, you reached little thresholds where you can't just cruise anymore. You got to. Uh, got to Take what you can. Okay. Pretty quick. That. Watch out for traps. Map shows that we've gotten down to kind of the bottom corner. Now, um, let's see what's up here at least. Kind of get this area cleared for a second. Hidden watch. Be very careful when you can't see that area below your feet. He's all beat up. <laughs> I don't know where he ran away from, but uh, I think the game is forgetting that um, he's standing between two, or maybe he already stepped on the trap. Maybe that's actually what happened. 
40% uh, even with our ring. Um, I mean, oh, oh, oh. How much more toxic sludge do we get? Look at how rocking that is. Two more. Okay. Free of that. <laughs> I guess that's the game's counter to... Um, to running away from the clouds. If you get hit by that one and you run, it continues to hit you with damage. Uh, is maybe what just happened there? I don't know. I'm just going to kind of keep running around Lobster Man here until we uh, juice back up a little bit. Maybe we can take this uh, opportunity. A harmless red cube. The cube appears to be Dasa. Okay. Weird. Very weird. And we can't get in there. Well, all right then. But again, good news is we've been healing the whole time that we might as well go exploring while you're uh, while you're waiting for some of these kind of things. Now he's not uh not too formidable. Alright, we've restored. We do have levers, and I don't you know, I don't know what one side or the other may be, but it's time. Alright, so here they are. Now we can we can kind of retreat and this will will help uh slow the attacks any of these that have remote ranged attacks may be a little more troublesome but we've still got three on our acid uh, venom sword which is good let's see just kind of chill and see how they how they present mm. Last wasn't great there, but okay. I don't know why that chest just decided that was the time to reappear. Who's coming next? Who wants some? Try him. Maybe we can get a blast the other way. Nah, that didn't that didn't work. The blasting stuff just mainly seems to move around furniture more than uh, more than really clearing uh, mobs, even here on level three. Uh, okay. Come on back up. Let's. Try one of these. That worked out okay. Oh, I don't know why that's a deal, but it is. Get our <laughs> poison bag up, and now we'll move the furniture again. More moved furniture. Move the portal around. Oh, I should have used the uh, should have used the multiple attack. Use it now. Again, kind of mini zoo. We're doing we're doing pretty well here, thanks to that. The furniture kind of. Oh well, I don't think I was right there. <laughs> Those blasts are just hilarious. I, I don't know. When I see individuals kind of running around that still have, uh, you know, obviously taken damage, they haven't taken so much as a result of that. That uh, that I think it's you know really going to clear rooms full of mobs. Of course, if you can hit it a few times in a row and it's you know a zoo or whatever, that's that's pretty good. 
This is our fateless, feckless adventure, or whatever it is. Magician's Row. We know that's good. Wind up double plus crossbow. How's that compare to the Paddington one we have? Um, four, eight, and three. Six and three. And we just got a new crossbow. And it deserves to get read about now. This spring steel double bowed crossbow comes in handy when you need to double your armor. Piercing punch comes with a handy crossbow crank for liquid smooth reloading. I'm sold. All right. So that's that's a good little boost. It's been a bit since we've seen something really nice that we picked up. Uh, again, the, the biggest Christmas wish list I have is uh, is a cheese grater. Would be really good, but we'll see what uh, what comes of it. Now, am I headed? Yeah, this is all new stuff. Got a little crabby guy over here. Hey, crabby guy. Curious. I can see what that does. Oh, so this is our offensive maneuvering. That's kind of cool. So we get two more attacks there. Attack with all the weapons at the same time. Your offensive abilities are increased until you get hit a couple times and your concentration is ruined. Okay. Well, that, that's that's kind of cool. So we keep all those stats while we uh, while the duration lasts. Fair enough. Um. Uh, Curious, that's what we're going to look at. One, three, one, and a three. Not as good as our Smuggler's Vest, but uh, again, you know, kind of the the lighter armor stuff is what we're considering uh, for our character in this one. Uh, get some good goodies here. We're still, we're still rocking the uh, trap ring. Uh, cruelly barbed plastic bolts, ten of them. They're, they're Pretty, there can be a few of these that are, are pretty, pretty formidable. Um, even though they're, they're plastic, you know, technically they're not a, a real deal. But again, I think, oh, here it is. All right, um, turn based. You don't have to, you don't have to run or panic. But we need to kind of map how we want to evade without getting pinched. Um, only 53 in the zoo, which is good. I think our our first move is here. And then we're gonna we're gonna wanna not get pinched and move back as we can. Okay, he gave us a chance and that allows us to correct for not uh not having applied that from the start. Now we got a chance to do a little bit of double damage. Oh, somebody got a a bolt trap. That's good. Um, so far, food is holding good. Again, you want to kind of just keep watching for opportunities. Ooh, maybe um, when you have momentary chances, just Huck a softball, <laughs> um, and then hope for that. That blast is gonna help us a ton here. Actually, I didn't even appreciate how. Yeah, <sighs> thou art a troll whoring sheep bugger hero. Come out to play. Yeah, there's a there's some naughtiness here. We need to punish. I think. Okay, doing that. So we'll just keep using our softballs when chance allows. Again, they're not going to kill anybody, really, but they keep uh, weakening a bit. Now, he's a real threat. We, we don't want anybody to get uh, looped behind us, and it's almost worth running back but i think we can handle them we're still almost at max health if we'd started taking any damage um i would be real concerned but we're gonna do the crit then we'll hit him i <laughs> think get another robo bolt that's pretty good um 
I hit you. <laughs> That's just a, a body up there. It's not an obstacle to keep us from retreating if we need to, which is good. Um, our health is still really good. So let's go back to our softballs. See if that well, didn't quite can clear him. But now we'll get a little blast. Again, the, the blast moved, but didn't uh, didn't clear. But very, very cool. It It's keeping them off of us and giving us more than ample chance to heal. We could eat in these little breaks if we needed to. And more turns as they uh, kind of try to regroup to let our cooldowns expire, which is great. <laughs> Whoever keeps stepping on whatever the trap is, is great too. Uh, one more. That's too bad. Uh, I mean, we'll... We'll hit him, <laughs> and they get blasted. Um, so he's, even though he's not really worthy of an entire softball, he he's the guy that could ultimately trap us. Uh, we've cleared what uh, you know a dozen maybe monsters. I don't remember how many in the fifties it was. Fifty eight, fifty nine maybe. Um, still got a while before we get more poison but we have uh have a multi hit ready um I guess there hit you normally and still really no need to eat <laughs> I, I may be out of softballs by the time we're done with this but that's all right there we go. Switch to uh, multi shot. <laughs> a whole bunch of those guys. This is the most most fun we've had in one of these in a long time. All right, somebody did get me though. So let's use our chance here to eat a. Oh, wait a stick. Um. Now, back to softball. That was a different one, so we must have killed one between the softball and uh, got a little blast that keeps them off. Let's us heal back up one more time. Um, let's go ahead and... Uh, Sharpen up the sword, if you will. Anybody super weak? Critical softball toss. Hit him. Now we're, <laughs> we're ready here. Taking a, a little bit of damage, though. And we've, you know, basically taken another 10 monsters out of the room, but... Um, Yeah, we we don't need more than a stake, but I think let's keep keep the heels coming. Uh, nothing better for us to do at the moment than weaken, soften up. He's stunned, so no damage there. We get a little closer to full health again. Um, hey, oh, we got a new new mob down here. We can read about him. The samurai bot, Mark Three. Samurai Bot Mark III, the latest and coal-fired samurai ro robot technology. This monster has not noticed your presence. Well, that's good. Um, real quick, while we're in the middle of this, we're, we're hour and 33, so we're going to finish this up probably, but it um, takes just a, a moment or two as we go. Um, since we're not fully healed, I'll use a softball here to try to keep him coming in. You can see a few more got aggro down there. They, they kind of will lose track of you, and sometimes you need to step out. Then <laughs> any that are in view or range will, uh, will come back around. He stepped up. We can finish him off. A couple more are going to come along, including our samurai bot here. Uh, so that'll be fun. Still not, uh, not a ton. Let's see if we can um, 
knock any of those. Uh, he's just kind of standing, which is actually okay. It gives us a lot more time. Let's now get these two. That gets it moving again. That gets a blast. Uh, who's... Oh, everybody's kind of healthy at the moment. Uh, the Samurai bot didn't fare too well at all of that, but we're at full health. Um, now we do have a bit of weight. The blast held there moves him back. He'll have to come back up to us. Not really cool with a genie just firing stuff. Was that bleeding out, out on me? I don't know exactly what I'm uh, dealing or getting hit with. All right, so we we did very well to this point. Get back to our spot here. We just picked up a little bit. He did just been giving up that position. We gave up... Uh, Quite a bit of health there. That's just too bad. Um, but again, this is this is why we want food and why we have it. So we'll maybe take a step. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was going to get us. I don't need to. Uh... Okay, you back. Sometimes just a step is enough to bring the next wave. And it's given us enough time to heal. Oh, that wasn't a real good time to have a miss. Now we don't even have a good chance to, there we go, re-equip our sword. I don't think there's anybody right below. Softball time. Multi-hit. Him come up. All right, we're uh, doing okay. We need a little bit more heal up time. I think we can come over here, pick up, pick up some various gear, um, re re up our softball supply. Let's come back over to our side that we've had plenty of success on, really, and um. 18 monsters left. That I mean that could get very hairy very quickly, but I think we still got three on there. Let's switch up. You know, let's use these wooden bolts. <laughs> they seem to be very poor. Um, not getting quite the same damage out of, out of them we used to okay now <laughs> we definitely uh, re regained their attention um, can we continue to get any hits there not a lot and remember the uh, combined ammo and Okay, now we're out. The strength of the ammo and the strength of the charge the sword, clear him out. Um, the bow and the ammo itself is. Uh... Oh. oh. Run, run, run. <laughs> took a took a mighty pop in the face there. But again, you know, we're we're 
managing pretty nicely here, if I do say, and we're just eating food that's only healing 10 at a, a pop. You know, some of these will will actually help when our, our health is down to, you know, 40, 50%. So uh, there's a spectrum here. I'd like to get more of these guys to come up here at a time. The little octos are kind of frustrating in that they uh, they will always hang back. Uh, ghosts and things too can um, can be challenging because they'll just sit at the periphery and uh, shoot shoot you from range like that. Um, and we're down ten food again. I don't know if I. Yeah, there you go. Get them. Keep stepping on those traps, boys. And then come get me. I don't think they're... <laughs> I don't think they're really... Okay. Let's get him. Let's see if we can... Get a couple of these with crits. Back slowly away. The octo is the real trouble there. Oh, man. Okay, there's that done. Now we'll eat a steak. Heal back up into the 40s at least. Try to get to at least. Close damage. Now we are in a single digits. It, you know, it's it's not possible. But remember, we we're just getting hit by that cluster, and we we're gonna have to kind of. Oop, now they're coming. Will a few of them at least come up this way? Come on. How about if I go this way? Yeah. So no, don't sit there. Now they're all going to hide again. Um, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm holding a softball. Can that just go in the stack? Can I bring him up with a softball? Okay. That's one. The good news is there's so few of them where... Uh, One down. We've already lost a bunch. Oh. oh! Okay, not too bad. Now, get a sandwich worth of heals. I shouldn't have done that until I was a little more healed. You know, six monsters, not too bad. We got six shots left with our, <laughs> our good sword. The problem is that they're all ranged, and, you know, you can kind of see as they start... As they start running around, we... Uh... We struggle. Now there's only two of them left to get me, which is good. We still got two more, two more good shots. Oh. One sandwich as we're going. Let's give you the old super bow. Yay! Oh. <laughs> we get a wizard's book for all that. Ah, better be valuable. That's all I'm saying. This trap was a hero, though. It uh, 
it softened up plenty for us. So, uh, very good, at least, you know, from an XP, we're almost to the next level here. Uh, let's just take a quick glance at the time, 144, so that, uh, that filled us up pretty well. I don't, let's kind of come up here so we know where we... I did all that with the stupid trap ring on. Uh, you kidding? All right. Um, to the dimension we go. Pull up the inventory. We'll do a quick sort and dump. Uh, we've got some cheeses. I think this is the worst cheese. Eleven cheeses here. A Chevrolet cheese log. Um, we can I think make at least one omelet. Let's try doing that. And nope, here. And yeah, look at that one cheesy omelet. We got enough. So just put it into position. It <laughs> uses. Use up everything we had for it. And again, you have to have it in your inventory, but um, yeah, that's two two really good tier foods that we're, we're trying to save, if at all possible, until we really need them. Because there will be times when you know we've got more health in our our pool, so we'll need we'll use up more of it, and then you know 10 will be a, a really minor healing. So those are wands, not uh, weapons. We don't have uh, those are handheld weapons. I kind of tend to confuse those with uh, potions a little bit. Um, this can go there. The rest of this stuff sell, 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 sell. I think that's a sell, 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 sell. Uh, even that is, if it was just the aluminum bar, I don't think it would be, but otherwise, so clean the old inventory. And as I'm wrapping this up, I will uh, wrap up the episode. I thank you guys so much. I really enjoyed it. Um, trying out this game and i hope you guys enjoy the content again these are going to be spread out over days but um this is certainly just represented kind of an extended play session for me to get it going build up some content and it'll uh it'll allow for some uh ongoing updated postings even while we're working on minecraft a little bit and something something to kind of balance that out i know we're we're kind of heading into phases i've already talked about in minecraft where we're going to be doing a little bit more building working on the base and uh, as we work on that kind of stuff, this will give just a, a different type of content. If you find, you know, okay, I got to wait for a few episodes to go by. I can't handle uh, watching building. Cool. Uh, that's fair enough. You know, try try out this content. See how it works. If you've gotten this far, I guess that message is a little bit late. But uh, that's what I was thinking as we got to the end of what remember this is episode three, four, something like that. So this is our first run. We're still doing good. Um so hopefully it continues. We're making our way through world three or level three, and uh, our cruising has slowed down a little bit. But we did we handled that monster zoo pretty well, and now hopefully we'll mop it up. Uh, I think we got one pocket dimension to explore as well. So lots of cool stuff going on. Uh, we'll keep digging into it, but now we need to escape out of all that, save and quit. That gets us back to here. We're going to just throw up the thank you slide and take down the game window and say thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, uh, even if you're watching these in series, please do uh, take breaks between uh, either your play sessions or your viewing sessions. Get up and walk around if it's indoors or not. But I, as you guys know, strongly recommend go stick your head outside, see what's going on, night or day. Uh, rain or sun, there's always something new to see outdoors, and uh, I hope uh, the marvels of nature are on display for you today. So uh, go, out, go out and enjoy, and uh, we'll see you back here next time. We're here when you're ready. So 
Until then, take care of yourself and somebody else. Bye now.